Hi everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk a little more about dysfunction and boundaries and the different things that you can do when you realize that you might be in a dysfunctional situation, a dysfunctional relationship, dysfunctional America. <laughs> so uh, the dynamic of dysfunction, there was this guy Karpman and he came up with the Cartman Triangle. And there's other, there's a bunch of other different ones with different terms and stuff. Uh, but it's basically, there's three players. There's three players in the script. It's a script. You have to have a victim. You have to have a bad guy or a villain. And then you have to have the hero or the rescuer or otherwise known as... And we'll talk a little more too about how do I know if I'm enabling somebody or if I'm helping them. Because what we really want to do is be a helper over here, not a hero, a rescuer, or an enabler. Uh, enabling meaning we're doing things for <clears throat> either one of these people, they should be doing for themselves. Uh, sometimes the victim will come to the enabler and and want them to talk to the villain in their life instead of going directly to them and most of the time that's not good because you want to have the two people communicating sometimes every once in a while you you might want to have a mediator intervene to kind of help uh, but you really want to make sure this person has the skills for this a lot of people really like to be over here the other, the other, the other uh, term for these people are the judge. They're the judge and the jury and the executioner. So if you find yourself going to somebody to complain about someone else, you're really handing all your power in over to them to judge you and about whether or not you should feel the way you do about the situation, which is crazy because you get to feel however you want to feel about it or however you do feel about it. Um, <clears throat> that's why venting to a friend is okay as long as you set the boundaries and you say, look, I'm just venting. I don't want you to go scold uh, this person. I don't want you to go talk to them. I just need to get it out of my chest you know, or off my chest and get it out of my head and move forward and I just need to vent for a little bit. And it's always good too to make sure you check with who you're gonna do this with so that um, you're not just dumping your garbage all over them. Sometimes partners think, well, I should be able to talk to my partner whenever I want about whatever I want. And that that's usually not good. You wanna make sure the person you're gonna vent to is in the place to listen and set a time limit. Don't go on for days about this person that bothered you or whatever. Uh, get it out of your system, figure out a plan, and move forward to get yourself out of feeling like the victim. Now, sometimes we are the victim. Like, definitely children, animals, our job is to protect them at all times. They're innocent. They are uh, more likely to be victims because they don't have the cognitive abilities we do. They're small. Uh, so when you're a kid, you can definitely be more of a victim. As an adult, it can happen if you're a victim of crime or uh, abuse. Uh, but a lot has changed since we were children, hopefully. And we can do a lot more so that we're not victims out there in life. We can protect ourselves. We can uh, move away from the people that keep hurting us. You, know, you can't do that when you're a kid or an animal a lot of the time. So it's our job to protect them always. So you get into this dynamic and you have the person who's getting hurt and you have the person who's doing the hurting and then you have the person who might come in as the rescuer. The problem with this dynamic is whoever thinks that they're this person, the villain, Nobody, usually. Everybody, uh, even the villains. The villains will usually think they're the victim. And uh, sometimes the victims think they're the villain because the villain gaslights them, right? 
and makes them think they're the one that's lying, they're the one that's cheating, they're the one that's doing all the same things that this person's doing. For So sometimes villains will project their uh, doings onto the victim and try to get the victim to take the blame uh, that we can see happens a lot. And it's also called gaslighting. Uh, lying, gaslighting, those kinds of things. So uh, the way to get out of this, like how do you get out of this is, is the question. Once you identified, yeah, this in this system, I am the victim. I am getting the brunt of a bunch of uh, stuff that I don't want to be on the receiving end of. Uh, you can go to a helper. See, what we want to be is helpers. Helpers. And what helpers do is they don't fix the problem. Like a lot of times these, these people are going to try to fix the problem for you or tell you how to fix it. Uh, we don't want that. You don't want that advice unless it's professional. Unless you're really sure the person knows what they're talking about. So, uh... Helpers, we're going to empower that person. We're not going to try to fix them. We're not going to tell them they're wrong. We're not going to tell them they're wrong about the villain. We're not going to tell them their feelings are wrong about this person or they shouldn't be afraid of this person or they shouldn't be mad at this person. Uh, we're going to empower them to get out of the victim mentality, right? and do something about this for themselves that they can do. They could, uh, I'm gonna cover the things that we can do. I have a little A, B, C method. So the first thing uh, you wanna do is you accept. You accept this person the way they are. Uh, maybe you've tried with them to make requests and they don't care or they don't remember them very well. A lot of times it's not that people don't care. It's that they cannot remember every little particular thing that you want them to. Um, and only they will know whether or not they're really being truthful about it or they're being passive aggressive, which could look like uh, when we are angry and we don't acknowledge it and we say, no, I'm not angry, everything's fine. And then we throw some salt in their coffee or, I mean, people have done all kinds of crazy things to be passive aggressive. Um, the fire department, <laughs> it's a cesspool of passive aggressiveness. Um, so we want to accept, okay, this person is doing this behavior or ignoring what I'm saying or whatever. I'm going to accept it. It doesn't mean I agree with it or I like it. It just means I'm going to go with reality, not my fantasy idea of what, what should be going on. So once you get into reality and you accept the reality, you can do some things like boundaries. And boundaries can look like, hey, would you please uh, keep your toothpaste on your side of the sink? or uh, some people are like, hey, I don't want you to squeeze the toothpaste in the middle. I want you to roll it up nice and neat from the bottom. Okay, but that's not really a boundary. That's control, right? You're, you're having to tell the person specifically what to do so that you can feel okay. That's control. Boundaries are things you do with your internal locus of control that we talked about. We talked about how we... Uh, can figure out other solutions. So if you don't like that your partner is squeezing the toothpaste in the middle, get two tubes and you keep yours hidden so they can't find it and squeeze it. You learn how to start protecting yourself because you're going to accept that this is just something this person either isn't into learning, they just can't learn it, uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, of course, you can always take your ball and go home. You know, when, when I'd go to play with kids at the playground, if they just wanted to, you know, play by rules that they changed all the time or whatever to benefit them, I'd say, well, I'm going to go home. And uh, it's even better if it, the ball is yours. You take your ball and you go home. And you say, when you're ready to play fair, I'll be there. Uh, so that's A and that's B. And then C, gosh, I did it A, B, C. Oh, self-care. 
<laughs> did ABC so I could remember, then I forgot. Self care. So you can you can try with the boundaries, uh, but also boundaries look like um, things you do. To you know, if I know that my partner snores, uh, maybe I get earplugs. You know, or you you have to be willing to sit down with what the problems are and find solutions together. But the best way, if uh, to have complete control over the situation is to figure out what can I do to make this situation better for me. Okay, self-care. This is where we go back, and I'm, out, I'm over 10 minutes now. Here's where we go back to the toolbox. And that was probably the first, geez, four or five videos with the breathing, with the guided meditations, with uh, the cognitive behavioral therapy and things. So I hope that kind of explains this dynamic a little better. Boundaries come from you. They're things you can do to make your situation better. It's not going out and fixing everybody and telling everybody else what they need to be doing. People don't like that. And you'll probably get your ass whooped right now. So be careful out there. And we shall talk about more cognitive behavioral therapy ideas soon. I hope you guys are all safe and doing well.